Good morning, everybody. It's 11 minutes past 7 o'clock right now and time for the Orthopedic Minute. And we go to the experts when yeah. we talk about this, Michelle. We go to DeMoss and from the West Des Moines office, uh, Dr. Patrick Sullivan is joining us in studio right now. Doctor, thank you for being welcome, here. Welcome, welcome. Morning, Michelle, we thank are going to be talking about something that uh, in some people's minds is unbelievable. And uh, when you realize how many advancements have been made in joint replacement surgery uh, in the recent past, it, it's, it's amazing amazing what you're talking about. Why don't you let the cat out of the bag, let, let everybody know what we're talking about. Well, about yet yeah, last year we celebrated the 50th anniversary of the 25 people who brought total joints to this country. And the transition from then to now is fantastic. When they first started, they admit persons people to the hospital two days ahead of time for a medical evaluation. Mm -hmm. They would perform the surgery, could take anywhere from two to four hours because of the mechanical nature of the time. We've perfected the instrument, so we, we significantly shortened that. And then they stayed in the hospital for two weeks thereafter. Yes, they did. Now, today we're talking about coming in, going home the same day. Really? That's now, incredible. You, you said the same day, and we uh, kind of hinted at it earlier. Uh, what time are people arriving uh, at the hospital? We'll arrive an hour or so ahead of time, but understand there's some background work done before that. Right. A day or two ahead of time, right. they come in for a class to understand everything. We see a therapist, so we do all the background work ahead of time, okay. out of sight of the, the operating room. Come in an hour ahead of time to get ready their IV, see the anesthesiologist, ask the final questions, be prepared. Then we'll do the surgery, and in our outpatient surgery, we have it such that we can perform it as efficiently as we can inpatient, and that takes anywhere from a, a non-challenging total knee will take anywhere from 40 minutes to an hour, and a non-challenging hip will take the same amount of time. And then they'll stay in recovery room for anywhere two to four hours. Two to four hours. Not two weeks. <laughs> not, no. two not two weeks. Not two weeks. Not anymore. Now, and is this with all of our joints that we're able to? That's the answer. This that's an important question. Okay. We've started now uh, last July, and we've so far done at least 70. Now, what the trend is nationally with the people we compare records to, at least in the doctor's world, is we expect, anticipate that about 40% of the joints we do right now will qualify for outpatient total joints. The hurdles right now are education, just like everything else, mm -hmm. getting the patient understanding that it's possible, doable, and just as good. They're going to have discomfort afterwards, and we treat that with pain medicine in the hospital. We give them the same pain medicine at home, and as long as you have their trust and they have someone they can bounce things off of, they're okay going home. Now, you have to be rather healthy because you can't have any medical conditions okay. that we okay. have right. to monitor. Because okay. that's what I was just going to add. You are kind of making it sound like the patient can also influence whether or not they it's this completely. is an outpatient procedure. Completely. That's okay. the first thing. So that's okay. the first thing on the criteria is you have to be healthy. Healthy. Yeah, and there, you don't have to be perfect. None of us are, of course. But you can't have major health issues that require hospital support in the first couple of days. And we estimate there's about 40% right now that can do that. And in this country, it's about a million done a year. Wow. And by 2030, they estimate 4 million are going to be needing a total joint. The trouble is, you can see that huge wave. And the other thing with outpatient total joints, it helps drive down some of the costs, which are the things the insurers are going to be very keenly interested in, including right. Medicare, because going to a million, from 1 million to 4 million, is going to tend to break the bank. Okay. No question about that. So is that what makes the difference between the inpatient and the outpatient is the kind of the health of the patient or is there, are there other things involved in that, whether it's one or the other? That's the most critical thing, Michelle, because in the outpatient facilities, we can design, we design the operating rooms there just as efficient, just as clean, and just as effective as in inpatients. So that shouldn't be the limitations. You can still have the same obvious surgeons working at the hospital as you can at the outpatient. And then you simply have to train your staff to understand some things. But they're already taking care of outpatient uh, surgeries and you just a little more training and they're ready to take care of the outpatient total joint. Okay, okay. now we're talking about total joint replacement surgery. Now what type of joints uh, can be replaced with this procedure? Shoulders. Shoulders. Okay, well, let's uh, take a look here. So and I didn't bring one of those, okay, so I shouldn't no, have started is, with that's, that. That's back. That's, <laughs> a that's hip. not that's a back. shoulder, okay, that's, nope. Hips. Hips. There's a skeleton representation of the hip. The hip here. Here's the prosthesis, two parts, cup okay. and ball and stem. Okay, there we go. And there's the inside of it here. Exactly. Okay. So this is what replaces this. It goes down the center of the stem there. Wait, here, here, I want you, here you're the doctor. You can yeah. show us how this works. Well, I slept at the Holiday Inn last night. Okay. Uh, <laughs> this goes down the center, center of the stem. This is exposed to replace the ball that we'll remove. Okay. This goes into the acetabulum at the a size appropriate for the patient, and then the ball then articulates with this 
So it's a ball Plastic in cup. socket, basically. We just replaced the same wow. thing. Okay. Wow. And then you can have a total knee. Okay. Is, what's the most popular one that, that's being replaced right now? Probably knees are more common than hips. It's probably 60% to 40%. Really? Okay. Here, let's show this one here. Now, what are we doing? What we're doing here is that's a, a model of a knee. This has a total joint is a misnomer. We used to just take off a large portion of the bone and it was really a replacement. Now it's more of a relining procedure because we learned that bone is important. Okay. So we simply take away what's necessary to reconstruct it and realign the joint and resurface things so that the painful surface is taken away. So this is resurfacing of the femur, resurfacing of the tibia, okay, and resurfacing of the kneecap. Okay, well, that is so cool. So almost like retreading tires. Uh, a good analogy. Yeah. Okay. Good are they, analogy. I have a question, silly question, maybe, but are the, do those come in different sizes? Oh yeah. Okay. For, we have we various have choices. Different, okay. Well, you know, we're all different, but we all fit into a, a, a range, and any prosthesis line will have anywhere from six to eight or nine different choices. That'll fit. 99% of the world, and the other 1% you'll know in the office, and you'll have to get a custom-made one. Okay. Well, and, and these are the individual pieces? Those are the pieces that are before they're inserted into the knee. That is absolutely incredible. And, how, and you say you can do this in a, like a, a knee replacement. How long does that take? Well, if it's uncomplicated, it can take you 40 minutes. So now, remember, it, I told you in an hour. You, in, in an hour, like uh, eyeglasses, they say, and I, <laughs> eyeglasses done in an hour. You can replace a knee in an hour. Yes. That's amazing. Yes. And then get somebody home so they can get in in the morning. Uh, what seven in the morning, six thirty in the morning, so and then they'll be home before dinner time. Oh yeah. Our goal is try to get them out by noon if we can. Re that soon. Yes. So with, with all of these yeah. replacement, you know, surprising, it's important to get up and move oh. and keep things critical for the rehab of the joint and to prevent complications such as blood clots. Those are critical complications to avoid. Yes, to absolutely. get them moving around. Now Move you, right away. Now you mentioned on this on the knee replacement. You said that you were taking away the painful areas of the bone. Now, Correct. when Move. you do this, uh, when you replace the knee like this, uh, what kind of relief will the patient feel, and how long will it be before they feel that relief? It will happen. We added an incision to the to the equation that wasn't there before, so that's painful. But what I what I like to tell them is, your pain now is something that's going to continuously improve as opposed to continuously get worse. Some people can recognize that the pain they came in with is gone, and they'll distinguish that there's an incisional pain now, and the pain they came with is gone. Wow, this is absolutely it's amazing. amazing. That you can replace all of these parts, and it's very beneficial to the people. Mm -hmm. We keep people going that way, and we prevent uh, other health problems that come about by being sedentary. Wow. Again, exactly. amazing uh, advancements have been made in the medical field. Right now, if people want to find out mm -hmm. some more information about maybe that if they're a candidate for this. How do they go about doing that? They just make an appointment and see us as they routinely would for total joints, and we're attuned to what's available or who qualifies, and we'll simply say it to them. I didn't mention the other secondary feature that's probably going to be longer than qualifying the patients is getting insurance companies used to this. Any type of change, okay. because they're big organizations sure. and they have systems to handle things, and this is a big ticket item, but it's a growing item. It has to be rethought in a business sense. So we walk each other through it and slowly come to agreement. And it will, it's just going to happen. It's going to be driven by both demand and cost. Well, well definitely uh, get a hold there. of uh, your facility and get, you have more than a dozen surgeons that can do this, yes. which is amazing. So yes. uh, DMOS folks, uh, get a hold of them, find out the details. Didn't uh, mention yeah. you could do shoulders also. I didn't, forgot to tell you that. Shoulders as well. Perfect. That's awesome. Thank you so much for being here, Doctor. Thanks, Lou. Thank All right, buddy. Thank you. Thank you. Great